Okay, so today we're going to dismantle the latest version of the Sennheiser HC25, which has changed since we last did this video, so it's worth going over it again. Also, the video quality on the old one was a bit rubbish. So, let's open these up. Uh, this is the version which came out uh, late 2020. Uh, it's been pretty much the same since 2016. This one's got a slightly different cable. Okay, so... So the H25, let's just go through what it's all about. This is a pair of headphones which Sennheiser have been making for nearly 30 years now. The design's changed ever so slightly, um, but it's, it's pretty much been the same. They were designed for outside broadcasting and professional use. So for cameramen and things to use, um, one ear swivels to allow one ear monitoring so you can hear what's going on there and hear whatever's coming through the, the headphones on the other side. They are renowned for being nearly indestructible. It's a very simple design but you can drop them and drag them around and they just keep on, keep on going. Also every part is user serviceable. Sennheiser sells all these parts separately, so if you break a cable or your pads wear out or you crack an air cup or anything, you can just buy another one, swap it out. And I know a lot of people that have had these for, for over a decade and they're still still going. So if you look after them, they will last a long time. Right, okay, let's start. Where should we start? Let's remove the cable first. So we're going to use a T6 screwdriver and remove that. So this is a cable clamp on the side here which allows you to attach uh, different cables on there. It's made of two, two parts with a little groove down the middle to, uh, to hold the cable there. As I said two T6 screws. These parts are made from nylon PA6. Um, the cable unplugs from the top of the ear cup, so just grab it firmly, pull, and that will come out. Uh, these ones, the latest 2020 ones, have got gold pins on there. The older ones will have a sort of silver coloured pin. Uh, the cable is rooted through this groove in the headband, so you can just pull that out. There's no adhesives or clips or anything, it's just a an interference fit and let's just do the other side looking at the cable when you come to reassemble it they've got R and L written on there and the letters should go on the outside uh, if you look really closely there's one small pin and one big pin which stops you from sticking it in the wrong way around but yeah, if you take a note of where the letters are it'll make it easier to pop back in that's the cable okay to remove the ear cups slide it down to the bottom of the arm Pull, it's off. Uh, next, we're going to take the pad off. Best way to do that is finger inside and just raise it up. So the outer part here is like a synthetic leather with a quite high density foam inside, and then like a harder backing material. It's probably some kind of expanded foam, and then. It's Got a plasticky bit around the outside which holds it all together. Uh, these are pretty tricky to get back on. Um, I've done it thousands of times, so it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, the first time you try and reassemble those, it might take you a little while. Just inside, we've got a dust cap, which is uh, just a circle of foam, about one and a half mil thick. That does also absorb some of the very high frequencies. So if you want to make them a little bit brighter, you can remove that. You've still got the tissue paper under there. So that's that's one mod that some people do that's quick and easy. Okay, uh, now we've got the actual ear cup. To remove the driver on the older ones, before 2016, you used to just be able to press in the middle and it would pop out. You can do that on these, but we don't recommend it anymore because uh, occasionally you can break something doing that. 
So what you can do is get a thin flathead screwdriver and just get it in the side there and try and pop it out. So these are just clipped in. Just working that round and get it to pop again. Pop. Now then, uh, doing it like that, you might mark the plastic slightly, but that will all be covered up by the pad, so it's not really a, an issue. Right, so that, oop, that pops out there. Inside here, you've got a piece of felt uh, or cotton, which absorbs some of the sound inside the ear cup and stops it from bouncing back through. The actual ear cup itself, which is around 70 mil across from what I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's 70 mil there, 60 mil here. This is made from PA6 with 30% glass fibre reinforcement. That's to give it additional rigidity. Um, yeah, these are I've never seen one of these broken, so they they are pretty well pretty well made. Uh, you've also got some ribs in here, which help increase its rigidity as well because the less flex you get in that that's gonna it's gonna help with the sound quality they did make a version of this with machined aluminium cups which did sound even better but um, there are some damping mods and stuff that we do to that that, that help that okay so the actual driver itself I would not recommend opening these up there's no need to do so but um, you can the grill here is held in it's just clipped in And again, you've got tissue paper on there which stops dust and stuff from getting inside. Got a bit more uh, slightly denser felt than the, I think that's like a, it feels like cotton. This, this feels like some kind of synthetic material. And again, it's to absorb the sound spilling over the, over the side. Uh, on these ones that are after 2016, the actual driver itself is a separate component. I'm not going to pop that out because they tend to break um, with a separate housing. On the old ones, this was all molded into one unit. I just, I'm not sure why they changed the design, um, but yeah, yeah, it was updated in 2016. Um, this is the socket where the cable plugs in, and in there you've got two tiny springs which press onto the pins as you put them in. And those are soldered to wires which go down to the voice coil. Um, you've got a mylar diaphragm. As you can see, with lots of lots of ridges in there, um, I'm not sure what the outer part is, but some kind of clear some kind of clear plastic, and then this again is is nylon. I'm not sure if it's glass reinforced. Uh, how can we tell? Does it say on there? Nope. Um, have I got a blade? Yes. So I'm just gonna cut that a little bit, so you can feel the crunchiness if it's got the grass. Yeah. So that's all crunchy. So that's got uh, glass, glass reinforced, fiberglass reinforced, like the um, like the ear cup. Okay, I'm just going to remove the other ear cup, and obviously, if you wanted to pull that apart, it's the same. Um, one thing you will note: this one has got screw holes for the cable clamp. This one's got a nameplate on, which confuses some people, but the they are actually the same part. It's just this one has got a little nameplate which you can leave her off and then underneath there are the screw holes so they've obviously reduced the the manufacturing cost by making it identical just with um, so yeah so they can reuse the same part just with a different little bit that plugs into the into the holes there which is nice okay um, the head pads again are some kind of synthetic leather with a foam insert and a, and a plastic backing they're held on with double-sided tape so if you need to remove the pads you just need to peel off the old ones and send high will supply with new ones with the tape already applied and it just sticks straight on next we're going to take off the arms one thing that I really like about these because these are professional headphones designed to be able to be serviced in the field so when you're 
you know, in the middle, you know, uh, sorry, like, like the BBC use these and all their nature documentaries and stuff like that. And uh, they're designed to just keep on ticking wherever you go. One little feature I like is inside the screw here, they've actually, there's a, there's a curved surface like that to enable you to undo it with a coin. You can actually fit like a 2P or, a, or 1P in there and it'll undo it just fine, which is a nice little touch because when you're out and about, you're more likely to have changed than a, than a screwdriver. So I'm just going to use the uh, the end of this scalpel. That just undoes nicely. Okay, I'm going to remove the screw. There's no thread lock or anything on there. Um, so they w they occasionally get loose. It's worth checking the, the tension every so often. This is uh, the washer. You can see that there's it's not a round hole in the middle. It's keyed so that when that's on there it won't rotate, which helps stop the screw from, from coming undone. Um, the other, this is the turnable hinge that we're, that we're dismantling now. They are slightly different. Um, then you've got this part here, which again has got a key that mix it, matches in with the washer and a little protrusion there, which locks into this hole on the side there, which again stops this from turning, which helps stop the screw from coming undone. And this is the turnable arm. You've got a single hole there which acts as a pivot point. Um, as you can see, you've got ridges along here which connect to a little molded in plastic spring in there. So it's a single piece and that causes the click. So that when you're positioning it, you can it'll stay in one position nicely. Um, you'll notice that it's also um, angled at the sides there which allows this to rotate a certain amount but not too much just to just so that it can accommodate different ear angles but not not flop all over the place okay so let's do the other one uh, this what's that part made of does it say uh, POM that one Yeah, this part again is PA6, glass reinforced, 30%. I'm just going to undo that screw. Remove the washer. Remove this. And again, as you can see, they've used the same, they've reused the same parts. Again, which reduces your part count. But um, in order to make this one a fixed, one. So this one always stay, the headband splits and to ensure it always stays straight you've got a little mechanism in there that, that works. The reason the headband splits is because when you when you split it like that it locks onto your head front and back so when you shake your head it won't fall off. Most people just use it with the headband closed but if you want a really super tight fit split it like that and it, um, it gives the headphone more support and makes it less likely to fall off your head if you shake your head backwards and forwards. Um, right, so we're just going to remove that. Okay, so this is the other arm, and you can see you've got two holes either side, which locate into these pins here, uh, and then a central long slot, which is where this goes into. And those three work together to to keep that straight, no matter how like when you open the headband, which is really nice. I've got some. I've uh, used some other headphones that have the rotating thing and both both arms rotate and it, it, they get all floppy and out of shape. Having one fixed one does actually make sense. Uh, so the headband itself is nylon. Again, this one, I don't, I don't think they've got glass reinforcing in this. Uh, it's just plain PA6 nylon. Let's have a look. I don't know. It feels a bit waxier. Yeah, that's not all crunchy. So that's um, that's just plain PA6 nylon, and it's very durable. Very unusual to break a headband. Uh, it's got just about the right amount of spring to hold it on your on your head. It's got the both of these again come out of the same. You can see they are, they aren't the same because you've got nubbins either side. But these come out the same mould and then I think they fuse these 
little nubs in afterwards. And they've both got the cable management built into them. Anything else about these? I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so those are those. When you, when you come to reassemble these, it's always best to do the the fixed arm first. Just makes it easier to get in. So you can locate those two nubbins in there. And again, reassembling the hinge, you want to put that in, rotate it until the pin locks in place. Rotate this until that locks into place. And that is a mistake that a lot of people do when you put it back together. If you don't lock all these in, uh, everything goes a bit floppy and the screw will keep getting loose by itself. So that uh, these are all the parts of the Sennheiser HD25. It's a pretty it's a pretty good design. As I said, they've been making them for 30 years now and it's changed very little over that time because they pretty much nailed it first time. The main people, the main, the, <laughs> the main people, the main thing that people complain about is that they are very plain looking, which is what, what we do. We often uh, will airbrush them and airbrush different designs and logos on there for people to make them look a little bit fancier when they're out and about. But um, some things that we have experimented with and we're thinking of doing in the future is um, obviously you can 3D print their, their ear cups with various different designs and shapes. Uh, it's probably best to keep the inside dimensions the same because these are all tuned to take a certain uh, uh, air volume in there. But you could certainly add on things. We've uh, don't know if I've got an example somewhere, but we've got um, we've been been playing around with some different three D printed designs, uh, and also the the hinges. You could do something with those, or maybe something that clips onto the onto the top here. We've messed around with lasers and lights and stuff that screw onto the side here or onto the cable clamp because you've got two screw holes there on both sides. You can locate an extra little add on on the side there. Uh, torches, lasers, something else. Yeah, so if you've got any questions about the HD25, how to fix them or anything, just, just let me know. Okay, bye.